we're recording. Good morning, everyone. Chantal and Rodi Hello. again. Good, good morning, morning, good evening, if you're in Manitoba or... In morning, if you're Perth, Western Australia, and here we yeah. are again in our favorite weekly spot. So good morning, everyone. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about overcoming doubt. Yes, and I'm just making sure it's on my page too, the, the jumping around bit at the beginning. That's right, course. we'll do it every time. So is <laughs> anyone here to say hi? Yes, hello. Watching the replay on YouTube. So remember, comments, love to hear. All right, today, yes. Rodin's going so, to get started. We, today, we're going to be talking about doubt. And uh, of course, it shows up, shows up all over the place in real life, but it really shows up um, when you are making art, especially if you're starting something. And that triggers, of course, a whole bunch of questions that you might have <laughs> about your art, about your process, about the paints you're using, about whatever it is. And so we're going to talk about how we walk through that, how we work through that. And of course, if you're with us, we would also love for you to join in and share with us if you have any tips or tricks when when uh, doubt kind of comes and perches itself on your shoulders. What do you do? So I think doubt, I mean, doubt is such a natural part of learning because we don't necessarily know what's coming next, right? So it's that, uh, I don't know. And the unknown, which is always, always seems big and scary and hairy, as I say to my students. Um, but when you're making art, there can be something really liberating about pushing through that doubt like through the questions, through the, I can't do this, right? So I I, um, I have this canvas behind me that I think you guys can see. Yeah, you can. And it's, um, it's stunning. It is so magnificent, even better in real life. Although it looks pretty darn good in, the, in this light too. <laughs> it does. I, when you first showed it to me, it was like, right? whoa, yes, so, yes. This, this painting, and I'm realizing I am loving painting really big. I'm loving it. Oh man, it's like, instead of a little playground, you have like the whole field to play in. It's like, woohoo! But with this, I, I decided, I, I saw a technique from an abstract artist and I went, oh, I want to try that. And so it involved putting some paint down and then tissue paper. She used something else. I think she used a kitchen paper, but a, like a brown, kind of a brown kitchen paper. And, uh, and paint down, you just put the paper down and then she painted right over top of it and flattened it all out and then you let it dry. So you have this texture automatically on your canvas and I'm like okay I can do this that is really straightforward I can handle that so that's what this started like and then of course I kind of had a loose vision in my head but it's abstract and she would put paint on and then spread it around all over and then rub parts of it off which I was very intrigued by because I like that really hands-on, like getting your hands dirty and feeling the paint. And this just called to me. So I did it. And as soon as I made the commitment to start this new series and this new exploration, a whole series of paintings, literally, I downloaded. And they, they come complete with a, a snapshot of kind of what they want to look like and their name. And I haven't had that before. And, and so I, you know, I'm writing down all these names. It was like, okay, okay, give me time. Let me, let me write them. Let me get them down. 
so with this, I, I, I started with the golds and, and then I added some of the blues and stuff around it. Um, and then I had, it's been a progression. And at every step, there is that doubt. So when I got the first colors down, that was pretty easy and pretty safe, right? I'm like, okay, oh, that looks really good. Then I had to add in all the blues because this one is actually called Sailing with Joy on Stormy Seas. So not only is it a new technique, but there is there is that energy that I'm also trying to get into it. And I know I'm babbling right now because I'm like really excited. <laughs> and this is just so cool. But <laughs> so I got all the blues down and stuff. And then I actually worked over here and I had, I tried to make it look like waves. And I was using my palette knife to get white on the raised parts. And, and then I was sitting with it and I'm like, I don't think I, it's, that's not it. It needs more. Okay. But okay. I haven't done this technique. I'm, I don't know. And I'm like, no, it needs to be darker. It needs to be darker. And I knew that that meant I was going to have to go over everything and layer on more color, black, some browns, some more metallics. And I, I was scared because in my head, my first thought was, yeah, you're going to do that and you're going to F it all up. And then it's just going to be a big pile of poo and you're going to have this huge canvas. And then what do you do? So, I mean, I doubted myself so badly and I really, it took me a couple of days and I would look at it and it's like, no, it needs more. No, it needs more. So finally today, I just said, you know, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. So just mm -hmm. do it go in and just do it. And I'm so glad I did mm -hmm. because, and I trusted my intuition, right? I just started blobbing paint on and smearing it around and wiping it off. And I got so lost in that process, right? And then I'd step back every once in a while and then I'd go in. But there was, so aside from the fact that when I felt it was finally done and stood back, it was like, wow, wow. But I'm, I'm so glad that I did it because there is, we get a little more confidence and a little more strength when we push through that doubt, right? Yeah. So yes. the lessons you learn from a canvas and paint are huge I love it so there we go there's my long-winded oops story and explanation and uh no but I think day. but I think <sighs> it's wonderful because of your passion your excitement and I'm so glad you also blubble bl bl like I do <laughs> you're giving me and I'm trusting also those who watch really excitement to do this so when you spoke about it last week mm -hmm. I was thinking Oh, how could I do that? But we don't have tissue paper. So I was thinking, I spoke to right. my partner, what do we have? So I had kitchen paper. And I had to like overcome doubt because normally I'm someone, I wanted you to show me first. I have to have a visual sit because right. that's my insecurities, my doubts coming in. Am I going to waste paint? Because, you know, there's the financial aspect. You know, all these things come into <laughs> mind. So this is what actually stops you, isn't it? Yeah. Because if, you know, you step yeah. up, you've used all this paint time, whatever. So it was really yeah. interesting. So I thought, nah. If Rodin can do, because this is also new for you, but you have been doing art for 25 years. But, you know, I, I that's the grace I give myself. But <laughs> <laughs> but this is still brand new to both of us, right? Exactly right. Totally that's brand new. Exactly right. And doubts are always going to come up. You know, we'll sort of, I was thinking yeah. about also doubt, and I'll come back to the minute of how do you even start. So I decided I would use what you suggest, but I used kitchen paper. So I don't know if you can see all and in, the bits. In Canada, we like call that. it paper towel. Yeah, so use paper towel. That's right. Paper it's towel paper, to do that. Towel. Yeah. And like you had a boy, I had no idea what it was going to look like. I had no idea how it was going to properly stick. <gasps> the tape, 
you know, kept rubbing it off, you know, how it does. So I decided to yeah. use the tape as part of a feature. See, once upon a time, that would have bothered me because it wasn't perfect. I wasn't doing, you know, it should be yes. nice and neat. And I thought, no. So I just painted around here, painted it up and used the roughness again as part of it. And I stood back and like here I went, oh, wow. It actually it's it was amazing. beautiful. So, yeah. You know, and just, yeah. You, in this case, I did use up some uh, older paint and less expensive paint because I wanted to explore. Yeah. But that's fine because, you know, coming back to doubt how to start, because, of course, starting can be very expensive. Starting can be what yeah. what what do I like? What um, mediums do I like to use? Do I want to use water paint, acrylics, um, you yeah. know, charcoal? So, yeah, it's it, therefore the doubt comes in, where do I start? Yes. What paper do yeah. I use? <clears throat> um, or do I use canvases? Yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah, all of that. It, it's, well, it's all part of that learning curve, right? And yeah, and the doubt, of course, of, oh, well, am I going to invest this money and hate it or not be good at it? Or, That's right. right? That's exactly right. So, so right. many things. It but is, it's so worth it. <laughs> it, it. It is worth it. It is worth it. And something um, I learned when my partner uh, was still doing his uh, body jewelry, his big pieces, which you can see one up there. I'm not good there. Yeah. there that one there. Something I learned was I didn't always like all these pieces, but I could appreciate the pieces. Right. So I'm taking that into my own art. You yes. know, it might be I appreciate the fact that I overcame doubt, the fact that I came down, the fact that I didn't feel like doing it, but I did. There's an appreciation there for actually giving it a go. Because if you yes. don't give it a go, how are you going to know? Yeah. You know, and this comes back why we call it art jam for healing, because if you are healing from childhood trauma or uh, grieving or anything, something that's happened to you, you <laughs> lose that sense of confidence and playfulness. Well, I did you know, and that yeah. going out on adventure, trying something different, it was too unsafe. You know, yeah. and the fear was too great. Yeah. But it's and been a this, big... Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to say, and this is one of the things I so love about art is the healing that it can offer us is so profound Yes. On so many levels. Yeah. And it's, it's not even necessarily in big ways, you know, yes. it's not like, it's not like you get the big aha moments, right? Um, all the time. Sometimes you do. It's, it's those little things. And I have found that so fascinating in my process that you know, whatever happens to be sticking out for me in the, in the moment comes up when I go and greet the canvas, right? Yeah. But the beautiful yeah. thing about it is that your artwork, it's almost like that's why it's there. It's there for you to come and just be with it and be who you are with it. And it gives us that grace to play and to have fun and experiment and make mistakes and try over and, you know, sometimes chuck something out. What the heck? <laughs> or paint over it, you know, particularly. Or paint canvas. over it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Look, I hear you because I initially never thought, see, to me, art was scary. So I didn't understand the healing power of art. And of course, you know, you go down that track. Doubt, I'm not an artist. And also because I'm not trained. I've been doing some online courses, yeah. but I'm exploring. But for me, what I've learned now, the fun part is, and one day I'd like to perhaps do some bit more structured learning is, like you said, it's about playing and having, coming back into that part of me, that little, that child. I remember sitting with my niece and she just sit there going, you know, all sorts of things. I'm going, mm, do I do this? Do I do that? You know, I'm so <laughs> cramped. Yeah, yeah very you know, mind controlled. I don't know. Exactly right. You know, now that she has her own daughter and I'm looking forward to hopefully, you know, great auntie wants to then do art, but I'll be different in that different space of art. I can sit down and just go, yeah, as well. So it yeah. really releases something in you. Um, Cause Willem, when he was doing his, um, this is my partner doing his um, arts degree, he do big things. This is afterwards as well. 
And he mm-hmm. said he always came out with a high, even when he did a piece of jewelry. And it's an adrenaline. And I, even with this, even with this, so it's quite a small yeah. piece in that. I had that for a few hours. I was just, <laughs> I was, you know, there is, isn't there? Yes. Yes. It's, we get a dopamine hit. You do. Like, woohoo. That's right. That's exactly right. So I've got to go and do something to calm myself, particularly at the moment, because everything's so, it is exciting. And, you know, now I understand when you bring mm-hmm. something to life. So, you know, you might not think, I mean, again, it's it's personal. But the fact is that, you know, when you start something, you start with like a tabula rasa. And this is a, a politician said this, uh, the, or a philosopher in this 18th century, I think. You start with a blank page. Or like even with knitting mm-hmm. or crocheting or woodwork or dancing yeah. or whatever. You're starting with, well, nothing in a way, but it is something because it's it's a white page. Yeah. And that can, so like you, unlike you, I can't do big yet. I start, I still go small, but I'm starting to expand, mm-hmm. you know, because being small kept me safe. Right. You know, and whereas, whereas if I looked at that big white, that one that was, I would have gone, oh my God, I can't do that. But I've learned I'm doing it in stages. Yes. I'm doing it, you know, and I'm getting there. Yeah. You know, and a lovely That's thing, also, so coming back to doubt and finding your own way, like I bought a lovely course. She's an Australian girl, Laura Horn, and she does this little mini, um, <clears throat> what's it called? Oh, I've just gone blank. Um, mixed media. So, you know, and yeah. I was only, and I'm not good at this. So, again, <clears throat> doubt comes in only to use a few colors. I still use, you know, three or four. But, you know, just doing little things like this. Now, whether I like it or not is, but, you know, there, see, I painted that, cut it out used Posca pens, you know, so she just took you through a whole process. She said, paint over words, you know, so this was last year, but I can see I've already come on since then, you know, had fun with colors I wouldn't use. Beautiful. So that's another thing you can do to start with, because that you don't need um, like to know how to put colors together and 3D and all that sort of stuff. That's why I do a lot of abstract because then I don't have to worry about perfection. Right. You know. Well, see, and and I'm just stepping into abstract. Yes. And that requires a lot of letting go. Yes, it does. And, and the, yeah, the doubt because I too, I mean, I have no training. I don't know. And I start to think, oh, Oh, I, maybe I need to, you know, understand composition more yeah. or something. And and it's like, no, you just need to paint and have That's fun it. and it'll come, right? That's, it. That's so. exactly right. That's right. And it may be that, you know, I may, like I said earlier, go and learn more about composition. But at the same time, I suppose over the years, you pick up things about the color wheels and that. But also I'm having fun just putting colors together. So again, here, mixed media, giving it a putting colors together I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And I'm not worried about should I put those colors together or not. I'm just having fun playing with it. Yeah. You know, it's, and more I do it, the more I realize I'm doing it instinctively. And that, in fact, as part of me realizes now I've always been creative. It was just suppressed and basically killed in childhood through a wonderful teacher, mm, you know. Great. So things like that. So it's just having fun, as you said, learning to explore. So again, I started small. So when I f- f- bought my first ever book, it was just this small. So I did the tiniest of things, you know, just a little bit yeah. of playing around. And, you know, this is learning how to do, um, we talk about Zen tangling and we do neuro, yeah. um, what is it, neuro? Neuro art. Neuro art. art. And this is trying to learn how to use a particular type of um paintbrush to do leaves and I look back and I have a giggle but you know I had fun but Mm -hmm. I started small so you see look how in a way how tight that Mm. is that was that was even just recently but I do these when I talk with you because this is something I can do while I talk I'm not good yet with right and again had fun because of this practice it's practice Mm -hmm. you know so yeah and you know, it's so funny because you keep saying you're not an artist and then you show your work and I go, uh, yes, you are. <laughs> and you have a bigger body of work probably than I do, right? Like you have all, you're experimenting in all these different yes. ways. And my journey has been very narrow. So I look at your stuff and I go, see, you look at that and go, oh, I don't know. 
I look at those and I'm like, oh, I don't think I can do that. So this, exactly. Right? And this is yeah. why I love our conversations because we come from such different ways and we meet here. So it's showing people, well, it's also showing me how you can, how this works. So, you know, everyone has a different way of getting there, has different fears, different anxieties. Some want to start big, others to too scared or like the other way around, you know, and it is good fun, you know, because things like I've got lots of, so when I first started, you know, I've still, you know, I bought charcoals, you know, and then I bought the yeah. gesso, which is like a glue. And then I've got my Posca pens, you know, mm -hmm. um, then I've got my water paints. So, you know, I do have a variety because at that point I had no idea, you know, ink, <laughs> Go on, look at yeah. me. You know, this is the, uh, you know, the the, the yeah. acrylic. So look at me. And this is, this is, you should see wherever else I'm. Because then Willem gave me stuff. My brother gave me stuff. Someone else gave oh, me stuff. You know? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, but you're not an artist. No. no of course you're not. You're not an artist. No. Of course not. <laughs> That's Actually, so funny. It is funny, but it is because this is what we think. An artist is, yeah. you know, this rather than that. And um, I love this uh, particular boutique. And um, one day they had this scarf and they call it the artist scarf. And I thought, yeah. oh, I have to have that, <gasps> you know, isn't it stunning? Oh, look. So that, so that's why I thought I'd wear it this morning because I went, right, you know. Nice. This is, this is getting me into the zone. So, Beautiful. yes. It is, you know, then I've got these palettes. Yeah, as you said, I'm not an artist, of course not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Look what I bought myself. Oh, a yes. silicone. Actually, I've got whatever oh, they yes. call it. I don't how do you, I've got one of those from how do you use it? Do I you haven't know? tried it yet. Is it one that you just you, move the paint around? Yeah. So instead of using a palette knife, you can use this. Yes. yes. And I'm so excited to try it. I'm a little nervous because again, it's, that's a little more for abstract, right? Which yeah. I don't really do, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting to really enjoy it. I'm, yeah. I'm like, and I found this artist um, on YouTube and she used, this was like the wildest, this is where I saw the paper thing. She used coffee and coffee grounds except her and tea charcoal or and whatever i mean it was like what are you doing lady and it was so mesmerizing to watch her mm. just move the stuff around and it was like what you can do that <laughs> right now i know tea and coffee stain i just never seen anybody use Actually. coffee and coffee grounds Yes. As a piece in a piece of art, I was like blown away. Yes. But then again, you use crystals and crystal, you know, because I've said to, yeah. I've got to go and get some of those. So you see, we think we can do this, but not realize we can also do that. You know, and a friend came to stay and gifted me this most beautiful dye tied um, piece with wrapped in, um, she'd made me a lovely smudge stick. And oh. she said, we'll make one together. And what we do, just water. And but we put uh, leaves and bark in it, and then allowed it to be in the sun um, yeah. for how many days, and then allowed it to open up. It was absolutely fantastic, like you said, to see this come alive. Oh, yeah. So there's things like that. It's just I find it so now that you these conversations are helping me really opening up to try ex exactly having fun despite the doubt. Yeah. Or the way allowing the doubt to drive, like that's the the motivator. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. So I have a cute story to share just about the love of art and children. <clears throat> My grandson, <clears throat> who of course, when he comes over, we usually end up doing art of some kind. He's um he's definitely more linear with stuff a more in the lines kind of kiddo. And um, and he doesn't really like getting his hands dirty. <laughs> which <laughs> I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm all over the place and my hands are always dirty. But I went to uh, go have a sleepover and go visit them Friday night. And um, in the morning, in my bag, there's this little 
piece of, there's this piece of paper that's been folded up and tucked in my bag while I can see it's some of his art because he does art at home, right? Like yeah. I bought him paints and brushes and paper and canvases and, and his mom totally supports his little art habit. And so I open it up. He he came, he said, oh, Oma, you didn't, you haven't looked at this yet. I said, no, I was waiting to look at it. So he, of course, takes it out and brings it over to me. And we sat down and he kind of snuggled up right beside me, right? And I opened it. He had done his own neural art, not the formal way that, that he but I've taught him how to do the lines and the coloring and we've done stuff together and he did his own and colored it all in yes. and it was so beautiful yeah. and he was just snuggled in and he said and Oma I did all the lines myself because at first he didn't he was too nervous to just do the lines yes. Yes. right that's it that's it. And, and, this is what you carry to and so he would have me do them and then he would color in. Yeah. But he was so proud. Yeah. And he he he's like, I did the lines all by myself. And, you know, I of course I told him how much I loved it. And, you know, he's my little artist. And I just love that he's always doing his art and creating. And he was so proud. Mm -hmm of what he did and I mean it is it's beautiful and it's totally his own oh, and That's I thought right. it was cool that he has now he's doing this on his own yes. like how That's cool it. that is cool and doing it that I, it's interesting you say that because um <clears throat> when my niece was younger mum and I would have her come for a weekend so mum and I lived near each other so she'd come and stay with me because mum was a bit older and I would take her out to the zoo and do things like that. And mum would do the artwork and the cooking and mm -hmm. um, things like that. And they're the memories that you create. You know, that's what we're talking about now as, she, as I cuddle her little one. You know, these are the things we bring up. And um, again, you know, we had one of her beautiful teddy bears she made just like that when she was sitting there. We had it beautifully framed. It's still with mum now. Mum's 95 in a care facility. So how many years ago is that? 25 years ago or something. And wow. it's still there, you know? Mm -hmm. And as you said, the proud and pride in that, you know. So this is sort of like the neuro art when if anyone's yes. asking, you know, that's part of it. Yeah. But like you said the other day, it was interesting because again, it's about exploring. You know, I sometimes start with how I should do it and then go off. <clears> I didn't <throat> particularly like this exploration of um watercolor. So I did the new the over it. So you see, oh, I did yeah. it the other way around, you know, and just played with it. So, you know, yeah. and then I can go in and fill in the corners afterwards because that's a whole idea. So, yeah, it's just, it's creating these uh, memories. Yeah. And Which getting them started. So wonderful. To, yeah, to think differently at a young age, whether it be through art or whatever it might be. It's, yeah. you know, I was thinking about mum was very creative with cooking and presenting. I'm creative with clothes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Willem's creative yeah we've all got our own writing yeah the way we talk the way we speak the way we present our homes all this is called creative and I think another thing oh. I've learned too over the years when something comes easily to you you pop it off you do yeah you know you don't see that that is a wow so it's about how do you honor accept that that's your gift your skill like I have to work at some things other people don't like I yeah. can speak languages easily, whereas my brother couldn't, as, you know, even though we brought up, you know, young age ab abroad. But you see, I can pick up languages and accents easily. That was something right. I could do, you know. So, again, yeah. and, you know, he could yeah. do other things that I, you know, he could write amazing stories. I couldn't. Mm. Well, you think you can't, but, you know, it, my, that yeah. came, it was more difficult. I have to give it more thought or more whatever. Yeah. And also whether it's yeah. an interest. Yes, yeah, so I yeah. love your story with your grandson because I think that's just those beautiful things that we create, whichever way you want to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just those lovely memories. You no, know, far as my niece was concerned, I made the best breakfasts, you know. <laughs> right. We still talk about it, you know. She's 31 now, you know. Yeah. 
cool. warms your heart, doesn't it? Things like that. It does. So, you know, so if anyone's got any comments they'd like to make about doubt, you know, and again, it's doubt. I think you made the point earlier. You're going to have doubt all the way through anyhow yeah. when you try something new, and that's what you said. So how I started was I just started very basically, mm -hmm. just even a bit of doodling. Even doodling I found has you just start it really, really, and then just start to develop each time. I give myself a high five. I text it to my partner's working at the moment, fire watching. So I take I send it to him, you know. Yeah. And he comes back with well done, or you know, and I'm going, yeah, because I still like to feel like I'm a child. <laughs> so I said, when he comes home, you know, the big high five, I bring him yeah, I, yeah. I get so excited, I bring him down into well, it actually was his studio. Come see, come his, see. That's exactly right. That's right. Yeah, to see right. what I did. That's Look. exactly right. Look. <laughs> Yeah, so show what you're going to show. Hey, see, and it's I find that so cool. And everybody's process is different and you approach it in the way you're most comfortable. I, you like to start small and work bigger. Yes. I'm the opposite. Yes. I, I kind of like diving in onto the bigness of stuff. And okay. then I, I'm like, if I like it big, then I'll play with it small, right? See? It's very yeah. interesting. But so this is last week I was working, I was working on this one. It's almost done now. Yes, this is, yes. But that's that same technique. Isn't it? Like it's, it's gorgeous. It's amazing. So how did you make the bottom bit stand out more? Like, did you add more? You used tissue paper, didn't you? Tissue paper all over. Yeah, but how did the bottom bit seems to stand out more? Is that just the color of the paint? Um, you know where the ridge goes you know is that just the that's okay. probably that's probably a little bit of uh, the colors that I use yeah okay the highlight right yes yeah I think yeah. it's wonderful and explain what you're going to do now what you've called see another thing you do is you get names Willem did I don't get anything like that <clears throat> yet so I don't again, always like no. this is the first time that they haven't been created and the name has been there along right. with right? right along with its intention for birth so this has been the first time often I have lots of canvases I don't have a name for and I look Gosh. at it and go I don't know painting number one like you know but, but this one hmm. this one is called reaching for the stars so it's almost done. Um, over here is going to be, I think, a little, just a little stick person reaching up to the sky. And I have a gold, small gold wooden stars. And I know one is going on for sure. And I'll sprinkle, I'll splatter some gold to be stars over top. And then that'll she'll be done and yeah. ready to go to her forever home. It's so pretty. I mean, I'm like, this is where I go. Oh, I don't know. Do I want to sell it? It's so pretty. But yeah, that's exactly right. So coming back at the end, because this is what we wanted to start talking about. There's so many different things you can use. Like you said, you're using a yeah. little gold <clears> wooden star. I think on a couple of things after you talked about that, I went and bought some things to stick on. It's like, oh, yes, you know, to make it multimedia. Yeah. So, so many different ways you can start, so many different ways you can yeah. do this. And then eventually you find um, your your groove, your yeah. groove. What and you then, like. then it's exciting. I've, I'm getting more and more excited each time I create a piece because it means I'm doing it. I've come down. I've overcome something, you know, mm -hmm. and that the healing yeah. that goes with it. And sometimes you don't even know what, what it is. You just know something has shifted. And that's all you need yes. to know. Yeah. All you yep. need to know. So you thank you everyone for watching. Specifics. Pardon? Yes, thank you. I just said you don't need to know any specifics. No. It does. It just moves things for you, right? Yes. So. But that was a muscle I had to train. Mm. You know, because also in business you talk to be specific. You talk to have goals. You talk to do this and life, you yes. know, careers and that. Yeah. Whereas this is it's it's taking that away. You don't need yeah. to know. You know, so anyone, thank you, anyone watching, replay, leave comments. Thank you. Love to hear what you do to overcome doubt in any area of your life. How do you do that? 
And yeah. we'll see you this time next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.